Good morning, YouTube. Yes, another house on Fountain Avenue in the Santa Clara neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, that's why I figured let's do it this morning because I knew you don't like the heat as much. Yeah. With my friend today, he's filming with me. He lives nearby. He lives nearby further south along Main Street. Yeah. We're in the Santa Clara neighborhood right here on Fountain Avenue. Fountain Avenue is just absolutely littered with abandoned houses, but you can see right here where obviously an old fireplace used to be, but it looked like they covered it over, sadly. So just more of the decay. Nice wood steps this. This right here, somewhat, I don't know if it could be saved or not, but the biggest issue is the condition of the neighborhood is the biggest hindrance to ever doing anything with this right here. <laughs> hey, now this right here is a real smart idea for a door right onto a roof. <laughs> I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, there might have been a balcony or something. Yeah, balcony or something, yeah. But. Besides, some people just like to kick it on the roof of the 40, you know? <laughs> yeah, or they could have had a little deck up there at one point in time. Right. You know, this is always a shame when people paint over what was beautiful woodwork. I mean, strip the doors back to like this right here, YouTube. Yep. And these old houses, this is much more beautiful and painting over this beautiful woodwork. You don't see this beautiful woodwork inside the homes that have been built the last probably 30 or 40 years nope. in this country. It's all junk. It's all junk crap. And it's, it's a the exact same design, same design same cookie same cutter. Everything. I mean, it's a shame when these houses are abandoned because these houses were built to last. I mean, if you could get a house like this in a good neighborhood, and fix it up it's worth a good amount of money like like you know i could I, if, like if these houses were in new york or boston they would have never been abandoned and they you couldn't touch these for under two or three million dollars yeah. but not in dayton ohio or cities like toledo or cleveland we're going to take a look at the front oh, of the house youngstown too. yeah youngstown yeah we're going to take a look at the front of it show the address then we're gonna wrap this one up so another sign of the decay from this neighborhood right here it's really sad yep oh yeah hey you, hey you know what like i told you last night i i, I knew this morning would be perfect let's see the address 216 this would be what 217 i'm assuming 217 or 219 but yeah just another case of the decay of what was once a great you know neighbor you could tell at one point in time you know this would have oh, been yeah. a really nice neighborhood at one point in time houses, anytime you see houses that are you know really good like some points to see around here yeah uh, it shows that used to be like you know a higher class neighborhood higher That's class neighborhood. neighborhood yeah i mean plus you could tell that this was at one point in time a decent working class neighborhood now it's just a very abandoned neighborhood full of misery drugs a lot of sadness Basically. then we wonder why dayton was named america's fourth most miserable city Right here, you could tell YouTube. Right, you could tell joblessness, heroin, and Democrats. Democrats, and also people that are uneducated and just dummies. Like you could tell right here, there used to be a house right next to this one. Uh, they, right, 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 yeah, good. yeah. My buddy Tommy, every time he makes yeah. stupid comments, likes to defend it. Well, remember, I did go to Dayton Public. Yeah, and you see right over here. So you could tell right on this house, there used to be houses on both sides of it. So by the time they get this finally tore down, there's going to be three empty lots right in a row. Mm -hmm. Three empty lots right in a row. 
Well, maybe they could turn it into a small community park. Or, or just, just, or just maybe, just maybe turn this into, you know, urban farmland. You know, Ohio's great land for growing corn and soybeans. Why not grow corn and soybeans back in the middle of the city? This is great farmland. This is obviously what all this was. Well, yeah. Was great farmland for corn and soybeans probably well, over a hundred years ago. What they're doing in Detroit, you know, they're planting crops in abandoned whole neighborhoods. Yeah, be yeah, yeah, and they're, yeah, and they're doing that because. For one thing, there's way too many properties that they'll never fill again. Because, uh, I mean, although Dayton is not near as abandoned as Detroit, because Detroit, it's been estimated 25% of the houses there are abandoned. Dayton's not quite at that point yet, but Detroit's got at least a third of their city. And I think Detroit's around 100, uh, and I think... What? 25%. Yeah. And then <laughs> Detroit, at least... Their city's around 150 square miles, and at least 40 of that is abandoned. So that's a uh, so that's a big vacuum to fill, and that number's still falling. So why not do urban farmland on lots like this? Exactly. Yep. It'll help with the situation. How everybody keeps calling Dayton a food desert. Food desert. You know? Yeah, because we hardly like on this side of town. The but only I thing. The they, only they thing. Tear down this and then just build a grocery store yeah. here. A grocery store, and then you know, then the only grocery I mean, store, it's not zoned for yeah, that, but. and the only decent grocery store north or west of here is that Kroger's on Sebathauer. Outside of that, There's there is no other, there. yeah, but that's small, they don't offer enough. They have, they have what you need, but as far as major grocery retailers, Dayton is completely devoid of it in most neighborhoods. But anyway, YouTube, that's it for the